believers. As we know, Muhammad the Prophet Islam, says that Juma, Yamal Juma, Friday is the best day in the Muslim life, best day of the week. So it is on this day that our father Adam was created, and it is on this day that we will be resurrected. Say so at the beginning of the Juma, before it starts, there are recording angels at the door recording us as we're coming in. And when the kutbah begins, they put away their recording instruments, their pencils, their pads, and they come and they sit and they listen to the kutbah. So, as we know, this is the most important day, and chapter 62 is entitled Juma. And Allah says on that day where, when the call to Juma prayers made, we're to leave our business and to strive in the struggle to have the remembrance of Allah on our way to Juma. To struggle to leave off whatever was going on out there at business, that you have to strive to leave that there. And thank Allah and think on Allah on your way to the Juma. And when you get to the Juma, you take your shoes off because you have all different kinds of shoes that you walk around in, different walks of life. You take off your shoes and leave all that out there. And we all come in here on our natural feet. So we all leave all that out there and we come here thinking on Allah on our way here. Leaving the business, leaving everything else alone, thinking on Allah. Allah says, Thakur Allahu Akbar. Thinking on Allah is the greatest. And then he says, after the Juma is over, disperse, seeking the bounties of Allah, but thinking on Allah, Kadirin, thinking on Allah a whole lot. On your way here, you have to struggle to get the other thing out your mind, but after you hear Quran, and the teachings of the Quran and life example of Muhammad the Prophet, now you better equipped to go out and get the bounties of Allah, but think on Allah much so you don't become too materialistic, okay? So that's the Juma. So dear believers, we have been focusing on the second chapter of Quran, Bakara, the cow. And each week we've been touching on, teaching on each ayat of Baqarah, the largest surah in the Quran. The longest surah, the largest with the longest verse in the Quran is Baqarah. So we've been looking at that, trying to get through Baqarah. And inshallah we will. So each week, we've been given the kutbah from Baqarah. And last week, we stopped at Ayat 102 of Baqarah, of chapter 2 of the Quran. 102. So we'll pick up with 103, but as we always do, we say a little something from the previous ayat or verse and lead us into the new week. So Baqarah, the cow. And we must mention as we do that Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu says, he suggests strongly that we read the last two verses of this sort of Baqarah each night before we go to bed. The cow. Now last week, as we were looking at I at 102, and we won't go through the whole part, but we've been focusing in Baqarah for the last maybe five or six weeks. Yeah, Bani Israel, O children of Israel. Law has been giving us that story, how they were in bondage in Egypt, how he favored them and freed them from bondage, parted the Red Sea for them. As they roamed in the desert and Pharaoh pursued them, gave them food, manna and quail, had Moses strike a rock and get water for them, favored them in so many ways as they were freed from bondage under Moses. And they wandered in the wilderness, 
desert for 40 years or so. And so, Allah has mentioned that he sent a book, Quran, to Muhammad the Prophet. And he sent the messenger, Muhammad the Prophet, to the world. But he said that he came to confirm what was in the Torah, what had already came to the children of Israel and to the others. That the Quran confirmed, verified what they had already had in the Torah, in the Gospel, the Old Testament, the New Testament. The writings of Moses and Abraham, that the Quran, the Quran verifies that. It confirms that. It says, yes, you had the truth. This is a verification. It is a witness to that. <clears throat> so, last week, and we mentioned this, Allah says, He says, of certain ones among the children of Israel, and we talked about this quite a bit. It said, and they followed what the Shayateen, what Shaitan, the family of Shaitan, gave or brought to Mulki Suleiman, to the kingdom of Solomon. And you'll read the translations, they'll say what the evil one, Shayateen. Well, we know this is Shaytan. I seek refuge with Allah from the rejected Shaytan, the devil himself. So it says, Shayateen, the imps of Shaytan. Not just the evil doers. Not just the troublemakers. That's 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 fancy doing that. When Allah says in Baqarah, He say to them, "Make not mischief in the earth." And they say, "Well, we're not the mischief makers. We are the peacemakers." And Allah says, "Why well, surely they are the fancy doing that, the mischief makers, but they realize it not." So there are those that are influenced that are troublemakers, do evil, but they think they're doing good. So matters are judged by intention, so there's even room for forgiveness for that one. So this doesn't use that word fancy doing that. This you say dinu, the conscious evildoer. So Allah says they follow what the evil doers. Multi Suleiman. What they brought to not just to Solomon, you have to hear this word multi. Multi. Malik. Right? So my name Malik. Malik. Master, right? Multi is dominion, the government. Okay? Mul, the government. The sovereign ruler, Allah is called Maliku, Maliku, the sovereign ruler of all things. And we say Maliki Omidin, right? Master or king of the day of judgment. But this Mulki is of the government, the kingdom of Solomon. That there are those who followed that Shaitan came to, not just to Solomon, he was a prophet and messenger of Allah. A wise man. But it says, Multi Suleiman. To his government. To his kingdom. And then Allah says, Wa ma kafara Suleimanu lakinna shayateena kafaru. That it was not Solomon, the messenger of Allah, prophet and messenger and wise king, it was not him who disbelieved, but it was the shaitan who rejected. And Allah tells us that shaitan was the first of the rejectors. So this lets us know that there were some evil ones that came to the government of shaitan, of, of Solomon, pardon me. <coughs> But before we stay there, we want to just take note that he after Quran 
talks about the children of Israel wandering in the desert, right? Wandering in the wilderness without an aim and a purpose, building the golden calf. Now here in Ayat 102, what we want to take note of first is Mulku Suleiman, the kingdom that they evolved from wandering in the wilderness like weary travelers, right? Lost in the desert to what comes to mind is government that they eventually evolved and developed into an organized system of government. That this represents progress from instability, just wondering, right? To stability, some sense of structure, some sense of organization, some sense of government and systems. So Allah just goes straight to that. When you read everything else we've been going over, Allah says, whoever is the enemy to Jibril and to his messenger, etc. All of that. But then Allah throws right in that, that the evil ones, that they brought something to the government. So it shows you that over time, they eventually grew and evolved and had organization, system, government that the children of Israel develop eventually into an organized system of government and progress. It's Quran. So after roaming in the desert 40 years, a systemized sense of government. Now this relates directly to the Muslim community as well. Because when Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu received the Quran in Ramadan in the ninth month, when they were in Mecca, they were roaming, right? Practicing in secrecy from house to house, right? They were brutalized and persecuted, so much so that some had to go to Abyssinia for refuge, right? So while they were there in Mecca, they were going from home to home. They had no sense of organization. This went on for about three years. But once he migrated, see this, this is a migration of progress. The migration was a pro progressive move, even though something negative, right, caused it to happen. They were being persecuted and abused. Suffered all kinds of torture we know of Bilal. And under those conditions, eventually Allah gave Muhammad the prophet the okay to migrate to Medina, right? And it was there in Medina where they formed the first Omar. The first Muslim Omar was, was formed in Medina, not Mecca. And the Salat was established in Medina. The Adhan was established in Medina. A system of organization, a Omar, education, the schools, etc. was formulated in Medina after leaving Mecca under persecution fleeing into Medina and as a result great progress in the Muslim community grew and got strong and then in the finality went back and conquered Medina okay and say Muhammad is a man like Moses so now we see here in Quran it tells us of Solomon that we mentioned last week was the highest peak of their governmental development. So they had government, they had national security, commerce department, right? Treasury department, transportation, economic development, housing, right? Communication department, parks and recreation. See, they develop some sense of organization and government. Allah is letting us know they eventually got to that point from just being abstract and wondering. Now, once they had the government, Allah says, Shaitan came to the Mulk, Mulki Suleiman, not just to Suleiman, but to the government. Of Suleiman, the dominion of Suleiman, okay? And it 
says, you early morning, that's say, sit around with my own zile and melakini, be baby, la herute, with my rute. And we mentioned this last week. And they came teaching what had been taught, teaching magic, they said, sorcery from what had been taught in another government in Babylon by Heru and Meru, two angels, right? But Allah says in the Quran that when these two angels came in Babylon, they said, we only come as a trial and as a test. So here you got one government in Jerusalem under Solomon government. Then you have another government, Babylon, right? So you have two governments. That's what this is presenting. I know we focus on Haru and Maru, but Allah is showing us Jerusalem, right? One government under King Solomon, and here's another one, Babylon, under King Nebuchadnezzar. And as we mentioned last week, it was the Babylonians who eventually came into Jerusalem after Solomon died. And they destroyed Solomon's temple. And they took the children of Israel into Babylon in captivity in Babylon. Okay? So you have two governments here is what you're getting. Now, and we'll say this and we move on. Babylon, we mentioned Babylon. You know, they mentioned their seven wonders of the world. And one of them was in Babylon called the Hanging Gardens of Babylon. That somehow they built these gardens up high. And that was one of the seven wonders of the world, like the pyramids. That the king Nebuchadnezzar built this garden, this great garden for his wife. And that's one of the seven wonders of the world. The other thing about Babylon, since Quran mentions it, then we go forward. They were taken into captivity in Babylon. The children of Israel. And the Babylonians destroyed Solomon's temple, that great magnificent temple. Now, the thing of Babylon is this. You know, we hear of the writing on the wall. Say, hey man, listen, they've been killing somebody over here. They killed somebody over here. They killed somebody over here. Now you keep hanging out there, son. Now if you can't read the handwriting on the wall, now I'm telling you, right? So the handwriting on the wall, right? We, we've heard that phrase, right? You keep driving 100 miles an hour on a 25 miles an hour strip, okay? You've got to know what's going to happen. You've got to see the handwriting on the wall because what happened to your boy when he did that last week, okay? Handwriting on the wall, we know that phrase. Well, that comes from Babylon. This is how Quran leads you to this. In Babylon, similar to ancient Egypt, right? There was a king there, and he had all kind of dreams, just like during Joseph's time, the pharaoh had dreams. Well, anyway, this particular king, Nebuchadnezzar, he had a banquet, right? He was the ruler. And there appeared a hand. And it wrote on the wall. Just at the banquet. Hey, wow, what's this writing on the wall? And it says, many, many tackle person. Parson. That was the word. Many, many tackle person. Right? And nobody could interpret it. It's like Joseph, right? When the king had the dreams, they got Joseph. Nobody could interpret it but Joseph, right? Well, here... There was a man named Daniel, Prophet Daniel, who, had, who was a Hebrew, and he was in bondage too. He was there as a captive, but he grew up in the ranks. But nobody could interpret the sorcerers, right? The, 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 the people went with magic, etc., right? So here come Daniel. And Daniel interpreted the handwriting on the wall. And the handwriting on the wall represented the dome of Babylon. They had become so corrupt that when it happened, it was big writing, the 
fall of Babylon. But the right is many, many temple person, person, meant this, that God has numbered your kingdom and it's coming to an end. You have been weighed in the balance and have been found wanting. I mean, you have come up short on the balance, right? Now your kingdom is divided and will be taken over by the Persians. Now the Persians are the Iranians now. Our, uh, Persia was great sun worship, but it eventually became a Muslim country, so Iran, the Iranians were the Persians, okay? So eventually the Persians came in and took over Babylon and they gave the, he the children of Israel their freedom and then they went back and built Solomon's temple for a second time, okay? This is Quran, because it mentioned Babylon and Solomon, so we have to see, right? Why is that important? You got Babylon and you got Jerusalem, right? Well, just think of our language. It's two. African American. Italian American, right? Japanese American. You ever think about that? It's two. two countries. Japanese, this is a place of migration, right? Chinese American. Japanese American, right? Italian American, whatever. African American, European American. <laughs> so this is what you really have going on here. Jerusalem and Babylon, right? And here you have a people that's been taken into Babylon, right? Now, one other thing about Babylon, because we're always connected to ourselves, is laws. The system of laws that have developed even for us. That, that is even traced back to the early days. Some of its beginning was there in Babylon. That there was a man named Hammurabi. He's one of the first that developed a law, a system of laws. 282 laws. Okay? And you can look it up. It's called the Code of Hammurabi. Way before the Ten Commandments, it says, An eye for an eye, a two for a two. Laws dealing with commerce and trade and family, okay? So, now you have all this going on when you read this ayat in Quran. That Harut and Marut came to Babylon. And some evil ones came into Jerusalem following that order. <coughs> now for some it may be touchy. But we go by the book, Quran. Now it says, "Fayyata al-lamuna min minhu ma ma yufarikuna bihi bayn al-mar'i wa zawjihi." And it says <coughs> that what they taught in Babylon was that which causes a separation. A distinction between a man and his wife. They say what they taught was a separation in Babylon. That's what, the, even though it was a test, the focus was to create a, a separation, a division between a man and his wife. But this is bigger than just you, brother, and your wife. Or a man and an individual wife? Babylon, when you read the previous scriptures, is compared to Sodom and Gomorrah, where Lot was. Now, Sodom and Gomorrah, this is real division between a man and his wife. Not an argument with you and your wife, brother. We're talking about what was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Twins, that's two, that's two countries. Sodom and Gomorrah, it's two. <clears throat> and then in Sodom and Gomorrah, the heaviest crime, if you want to call it that then, most certainly they, they won't call it that now, is homosexuality. That in, 
and Sodom and Gomorrah, it had grown to such a point where it was so big that even when Lot, when Allah sent angels to Abraham and Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, right? The cousin of Abraham, a prophet and messenger. <clears throat> when they sent angels to him, appearing as men, that his own people tried to crack on the men. The men had a sexual desire for the angels that were men. When you read Quran, it says that they saw these men angels, right? And they came rushing to... <laughs> yeah, we used to say... Uh, he trying to rap with the sister, right? Well, we say put, come, push it up on him, right? But pushing up on him with sexual desires. So even Lot said, oh, back up, you're embarrassing me. These are angels from God. My people here in San Domingo Mall, back up. He, I mean, he was so embarrassed by this, he said, here, take my daughters, man. And you know what they said? We don't want your daughters, man. We don't want no women. We want these men. We want to we wanna have sexual relations with these men. We want to marry these men. So what Allah tells Lot? See, this, this all goes together. Because they came to divide a man and his wife. The real way you divide a man and his wife is you, when you redefine the concept of marriage. And you say, yo, bro, she get on your nerve, don't worry about it. You know me, you've been rolling a long time together, bro. Don't worry about her. Me and you dudes, but it's all right now. Let's jump in the sack. <laughs> Sister say, you know what? <clears throat> that joker been getting on my nerve for a long time, man. You know what? I ain't got to deal with you, man. I got my girlfriend here. That's real, right? So that's how you really divide a man and his wife when you break the natural bond that is there and say it is all right and it is preferable that men sleep with men or men marry men and women marry women. That was Sodom and Gomorrah. So it say they came teaching that but said, and this is, you know, this is real. But they said it is only a test. That you might have that tendency. Your, 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 uh, uh, chromosomes, etc. Might be, you know, men have, we have both chromosomes, right? Masculine and feminine. All of us have that. A man, the strongest man, have feminine chromosomes, right? Tendency. And masculine. So one may dominate the other, maybe a little more feminine for a man. That's your test, brother. That don't mean you have to give in to that and go follow that through because the society say it's all right. So that's a test. So it said, they said this is only a test. That might be your hardest test in the world. Now, in the society, they say, listen, be yourself, man. You feel that way. They can't say it's a sickness. I'm not either, you know. Be yourself. You've been feeling like sleeping with another woman for 15 years. Do that now. That's your test. Might be a hard test. Same come with a brother. So this is how you have to see this, that it, that it said that it was not Solomon. He was the president. He was top man. But it wasn't Solomon. But it was those in his government that Shaitan was able to influence that way. But it wasn't Solomon. He was wise. He was a messenger of, of Allah. It wasn't Solomon, but it was the Shaitans who taught this disbelief. But they taught it in his government. But it wasn't Solomon. Now, if you're not 
Solomon and a messenger of Allah and strong, then you're going to go along with what's already there in the government. And then you'll say things that make us say, whoa. I expect him to say that. So we have to connect this. So they develop into government. So that's how when you get the concept, and if you look it up, you will see that Babylon and Salomingo Mall are compared because it says that says that Babylon was destroyed just like Salomingo Mall. And when you read about Salomingo Mall, Sodom and Mall, that's where it's two cities, it's twin cities. It got so bad, what a lot say to Lot. Say, man, you got to get out of here. You know what you can do with that now. You got to get out of there. And the place was so bad, I guess they was partying all night into what they were into. Then he said, this is what you do early in the morning. But you got to get out of there. But they got hangovers from the night before. So while they sleeping, you get your family, your daughter, your two daughters, your daughters, your wife, your children, and your people, and you get out of there, man, early in the morning. Because I'm bringing down fire and brimstone on Sodomingo Mall. So Lot got out of there, right? But not only did he get out of there, Lot told him, don't look back, man. There might be some good days there. But that thing done become so, 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 uh, so vast. They say, don't look back. Just keep looking ahead to the future. But his wife, she just couldn't resist the temptation. She probably was saying, man, she probably said, I don't believe they like that. Man, I got to get one more look. They couldn't have degenerated like that. Say, yes, they did, baby, but you got to keep looking forward. And say, she took one look back and say, she turned into a pillow of salt. And they say, Lot just had to keep going on. She got stuck in yesterday, right? So that's a message, too. You know, the song says it's so hard to say goodbye to yesterday. But you got to keep looking forward. Now, What's wrong with yesterday? Nothing. Because we're looking back now, right? You can look back eventually. But you got to get to solid ground first. So now we're looking back at history, right? We're looking back. But after he got away for a while, you have to get away from it first and reach solid ground. And then you can look back and learn from history. But you have to go ahead and get solid. So Allah says in Quran, and we read this, Allah says, those of the past, you won't be asked anything about them. To them is their judgment, but you don't have to ask anything. You won't be asked anything about the children of Israel or any of this. You'll be asked about what you do. But you need to know that because there's a lesson there. And if you've been able to follow me, even in this, there's a lesson for right now. The law has clearly defined a man and a woman as husband and wife. But Shaitan will whisper as he has done and give a different definition of what's marriage for men and women. And will define it as, and we have a right to this, no matter what they say. People have a right to do what they want to do, live how they want to live. Islam don't follow people and go spy on them in their house, etc., etc. You do what you want to do. But when it's a public issue, and we have our beliefs with both Quran and the Bible, both scripture condemns Sodom and Gomorrah and let us know that God destroyed it because it had got to such a point with homosexuality where Allah had to destroy it. That's Quran. And that doesn't that mean we go out and do what we... No, no, no. We know that. We know that. People have a right to do whatever they want to do. Especially here in America, right? But we have a right as believers, as Muslims, people of faith, to stand by our faith, right? 
and stand by what we understand and what our book tell us. And we have a right to do that. And we have to keep that going because in my opinion, in coming from Quran and knowing us as Muslims, our children are confused enough. Our home situations are confused enough. They already have identity crisis already, right? Trying to deal with who they are in puberty, right? Who they are as a young man. Who they are as a young woman. Our children getting the message. It's up to us as adults. You do what you want. But our children getting these messages just like these videos, bang, 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 bang. They get this message and they don't know who they are already. They're growing into that. And then you, quote, unquote, say it's all right. From on high, a man come out and say he's a homosexual playing ball. And you give him a phone call and say congratulations. Say I'm proud of you. What message does that send to our young people? That's real. What message does that send to our young people? Now again, we're going from the book, from the book that this divides the family. Now again, we make it clear though, this is not us coming down on people's life and say we can't do that. That's not what that's not what we're about. We definitely just cannot do that. People have their private lives, they have their struggles, this, that, and the other, whoever they identify themselves as, that's who they are. That's up to them. But we have to know that as Muslims and as believers, what Allah says to us and how he defines our family life and how we have to be concerned about these messages that's coming all through the media and what our young people have to deal with. And believe me, I know it's a struggle for them. They struggle enough trying to decide who they are and living in this world, then when you get these kind of messages, if we don't address it, you have a right to stand up and say, no, this is our view. As Muslims and believers, but I've been acting happy doing your house in the thing, what for accurate at the house in the thing, what can that be known? Till they left the rip out of me. What's the law to us? Salam, Allah, Rasul, he Kareem, Muhammad, sorry, Salam, come about. So, Imam, I thought you was going to be going from Baqarah. Well, this is where Baqarah leads you. Babylon, children of Israel, Sodom and Gomorrah, teaching magic, dividing the family, etc., etc. So that's how Quran does. It mentions Babylon. So it sends you to go that way and to look. So in the next couple of minutes, before we close, we'll at least do ayat, here ayat 103. وَلَا أَنَّهُمْ آمَنُوا وَتَكَوْهُ لَمَّ ذُوبَتُمْ مِنْ إِنْدِ اللَّهِ قَيْرٌ لَوْ كَانُوا يَعْلَمُونَ If they would just have believed and had taqwa, righteous, thoughtful, God consciousness, then they would have received from Allah a good reward. If they but knew. Oh you who believe. Now it goes to the believers from the children of Israel to the believers. Oh you who believe. Do not say trick words, raw in that, trick words that appear to have a good meaning but really a negative meaning. But say we consider it, we consider it and listen. Well, little Kafirin had their bonalim. And for the disbelievers, there's a severe punishment. And we close here. Yeah, when do they in a cafe room and at little kitabi with little musritina and you nezala alikum in kairin kairin min rambikum? Wallahu yaktasu bi rahmatihi meyashau. Wallahu dul fat lil ali. And that is this. The 
disbelievers from among the people of the book, they do not like that Allah sends down something good, that there's something sent down good from your Lord unto you. Some of the disbelievers from among the people of the book, they don't like that something good comes down to you from your Lord. And it says, but Allah gives his mercy to whomever he pleases. And Allah, wallahu dhul fatlil alim. And Allah gives the most mightiest of bounty. The most mightiest of bounty. That Allah will give you your grace. Allah will give you your mercy. There are those that don't like that the Muslims or anyone else get something good, right? Out of envy and out of jealousy. They think that they're the only ones that should be blessed. And then it says in another place here, it says that, that they say, none will enter the garden unless you be a Jew or a Christian. That's what it said. That's coming up next. Next week we'll, we'll read that. None can enter the garden unless you be a Christian or a Jew. And then Allah says, yeah, but those who believe and are the doers of good, there's no fear for them, nor is there, nor, nor is there any grief. There's no fear for them, nor should they grieve. So know, dear believers, as we close, that whatever Allah intends for us of good, there may be those that don't want us to have it, don't believe we should have it, think it's exclusively for them. But Allah says he gives his grace and his mercy to anyone that he pleases. No matter what color you are, what size you are, where you come from on this earth. And dear believers, let us pray that Allah will guide us and protect us and have mercy on us. And that Allah will, will, will shine the great light upon the people of the world, upon our community, upon the people of the world. And bless us with the strength and the courage to stand upon the principles that we get from Quran, no matter what the world is saying. And that is not saying we're to dislike or to hate anyone, because I'm sure... That if we check our family, the way they got this world made up, that you'll find somebody that's gay or homosexual or this, that, and the other in our families. And because they're your family, that don't mean you to reject them as your family. It's just how it is. But whatever lifestyle they live, you can reject that lifestyle. But you don't reject them as their family. And that might be hard for someone who's hardcore. But that's just how it is because more, and it's becoming out more and more and more. There are people that's in the closet, whatever they call it. And I guess when somebody congratulates them, I guess they're saying, hey, you've been in the closet. Hey, that's a good, strong thing for you to come out. That's your opinion. But in my view as a Muslim and believer, when you have responsible people and they just blatantly send this message out, and we know our neighborhood already. We know what, I was a school teacher, man. I know what I saw. Young girls, that, that wasn't them, but peer pressure. They hugged up, beautiful young girls, hugged up, kissing each other, walking down the hall with each other in a sexual manner. All of them don't have that leaning. That's peer pressure. That's the thing to do for some of them, for many of them. But if a person has something they have to struggle with, nobody's condemning that. That's, that's, that's on you. But when you send that message, like with all this killing and these videos, it's okay. It's okay to do that. It's okay for a man to show you on TV turning another man. But that's okay in this society, right? But what about our children, man? This is the way they're not thinking about it. You raising a baby. You raising a baby. I'm raising children. Now I'm telling my daughter one thing, right? You telling your son, this is how I go. They see a mother and a father. But then from on top, they send these messages through the, through the TV. And then from on top, somebody tell you it's okay to have same-sex marriages. And then yes, man, you look up and your daughter done married another woman. And then you just have to deal with that. So you have to speak on these things. But you try to do it with balance and compassion. So let us close. Rabbana Atinafi Dunya Hasnatan Wafi Akrati Hasnatan Wakinada bin Nam.